anxiously and patiently for the presidential election results since the polling on Tuesday. In the interim, anxiety has heightened as the scenario of a disputed election has started playing itself out. A series of objections and demands by the National Super Alliance have put the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission under a great deal of pressure and presented the spectre of a long-drawn tag of war. The latest was declaration by the Opposition Alliance that its presidential candidate had won the election, presenting a set of numbers different from the provisional results released by the IBC that had the governing Jubilee Party candidate ahead. NASA went ahead to demand that the IBC declare its candidate the winner and have himself installed as a president. Now, the election rules are clear of this. The electoral management body has the sole mandate to issue a declaration on election results. It can only do so based on its own account of the votes within the safeguards established with the participation of party agents and electoral observers and not numbers generated from irregular sources. It is also clear that the IBC can only function when it is fully independent and not under the direction from any other body or authority and especially not under pressure from any of the contestants. These are the laws and also are the basic principles guiding any electoral process. They do not bar any interested party, be they contestants, media or observers, from maintaining and even publishing their own figures. But only from the official account will the winner be determined and declared. And of course, as we've mentioned before, we'll be keeping our eyes peeled on what will be happening at the Bombers of Kenya, which is the nerve center of this election. And of course, we'll give you all the gritty details today on what will be happening. And as always, I have my panelists with us this morning to take us through also uh, a raft of issues that we'll be discussing, that of which we know is very contentious, of Raila declaring himself, of course, the president-elect. And we have with us Samar Al-Kindi. She is a communication and research expert. Also, we do have with us the chairperson of the National Agenda and Equality Commission. This is Winfred Lichuma. We do have with us as well this morning Irungi Hutton, who is Associate Director of the Society for International Development. And also we do have with us Dr. Siza Mwangi, who is a political commentator here on Decision 2017. So we have a raft of issues to discuss here this morning. And of course, remember, you can always hit us on Twitter. Our hashtag is Decision 2017. And we can drill deeper right now and also see what we have in our dailies this morning. I couldn't really access also my server this morning. And uh, I couldn't also now download our soft copy of a daily nation but this is the front page of a daily nation today if you may see it as it is nasa declares poll victory in doomed move this is what we have on the front page of the daily nation today uhuru provincial results shows that uhuru is at 8.2 million uh, votes that is 54 percent raila at 6.7 million votes 45 percent with more than three quarters counted also, illegal. Masala demands that Raila be sworn in, violating the law and constitution, and also premature. Chebukati, the boss of Electoral Commission, expects all the results today, and also incorrect. IBC says claim that the final results are in its service is grossly incorrect and premature. And we have this story is well fleshed out for you on page 2, 12. Uh, 19 and 28 of the Daily Nation today. And also, also there is an election roundup where we can see ex-policeman fight his way to parliament. Also, Northeastern elects, or it says, elects first woman MP. That story is tucked away on page 19 of the Daily Nation. Also, we have a sidebar story. High praise for Paul by Observer Teams is also a sidebar on the front page of the Daily Nation. And this story continues on page five of the Daily Nation today. At the back page of the Daily Nation is all about Dare, who has been lost. Of course, we know there was an extradition of Dare from UK, and he was arraigned in court. Dare demands VIP treatment in the cells. Lawyers say his preacher on child trafficking charges will comply with any conditions if freed on bail. And Matatu owners ask Kenyans to resume duties. Right, they say. The Matatu Welfare Association has urged Kenyans to resume their normal duties to avoid crippling the economy as it called for calm in the country. Addressing the media at a Nairobi hotel yesterday, the association's officials say the Matatu industry is bound to suffer as many people are jittery of how the situation will turn out following disputed outcome 
of the presidential election. Also, a uh, bank charged with selling 42 million shillings is another story at the back page of the Daily Nation. And a study, vitamin B3 can prevent miscarriages, is all about also health at the back page of the Daily Nation today. I will show you momentarily what we have in the standard, but of course, looking at the smart screen that is behind me, we have the front page of the star as well. And this is what is headlining the front page of the star today. NASA, Ryla says, or NASA says, Ryla warn, observers call for restraint. This is what we have on the front page of the star this morning. Election observers, UK government say dis disputes should use set mechanism. That is what we have on the front page of the star this morning. I will show you also what we have on the front page of the Business Daily and also the Standard as well. This is the star for you. And we have the Standard carrying this particular headline for you. Fresh twist in battle for State House. Gear shift IBC fights back NASA's figures contradicting its own portal share that puts Uhuru ahead of Ryla by 1.3 million votes. As observers declare poll was transparent, free and fair, thus changing tempo of state house race. That story is tucked away on page four of the standard today. And you have their faces, big or new list of big winners and losers, right? And their faces are spread here on the front page of the standard. Samuel Pogisha, West Pokot. Uh, this is senatorial seat, Kithuka, uh, Kindiki Kithure. That is the Rakanithi. We have Nderitu. Muridi, he's now the governor-elect like Kipia. Also, we have Kifuda Kibwana. He has maintained his seat as well. Amos Werko, Margaret Kumar, the first uh, sen senator-elected woman was in Gishu. Also, we have Cyprian Awiti, Josephet Nanok. And also, we have the losers as well. Moses Akaranga from Vihiga, Nadif Jama, uh, Gideon Mungaru, and Issa Timami. That is what we have on the front page of the standard also still. Processing form, form, form 34B at Bomas. We have the stages here also uh, given out from the front page of the standard. Form 34B, which bears constitu constituency tally sent through secure file transfer protocol. It's, it aggregates results from Form 34A from the polling stations once the commission receives the file. They call the returning officer to confirm. Then it goes to the second stage where it includes printing the form and giving them to party agents, both Jubilee and NASA, have about five agents logged into the IBC system to compare the forms and the text messages. Then to stage three, scrutinizing or scrutinizes the same results of going, going to the IBC offices to counter check what has been sent against what is on the forms. Now there are six clusters handling the work. Each cluster has six officers. Or officers their work is almost similar to agents then it goes to stage four which includes going for validation about five officials of the Commission validate the forms and forward them to stage five where stage five the results go to the Commission to collect from constituency once the Commission has collated then they will check if winner has requisite numbers to be declared validly elected and this is a process that we eagerly await today as I mentioned earlier we're given to understand but that before noon today they will have declared who is the president-elect this is in tanzania this is a citizen of course uh, life goes on elsewhere and government to retake age farms from failed investors idle factories and facilities to be handed over to the treasury registrar let us this month this is the citizen in tanzania and bill gets to pour it's 780 billion shillings into Tanzania. This is Tanzanian money. And we can see also a related picture here of President John Pome Magufuli and Bill Gates uh, sharing a light moment. This story continues on page three of the citizen in Tanzania. Still in Tanzania also, we have one entry carrying the same story. Bill Gates, Amwaga Mabilioni, Tanzania, it says, Atoa. And you can see us a related picture as well on the front page of the citizen in Tanzania. Police Wawa Watukuminatatu.
Kibiti wakamata silaha nzito that is another story that you want to follow on page 4 of Bonainchi in Tanzania right let me show you what we have also on the front page of the business daily today the hard copy that I do have this morning and this is what you have on the front page of the business daily now taxpayers to bear 2.8 billion shillings cost of firing governors right even as they're going home also will be saddled with that responsibility of actually seeing or giving them that golden parachute so to speak public finance county chiefs their deputies and executive to exit with a handsome set of packages set in law uh, this story is all oh, this story continues on page four of the business daily this morning and renewed activity in financial markets as normalcy returns of course we saw how the shilling had been stocked by the electioneering process that we are in and it is good to know that yes there is a resumption of the shilling back to normalcy this story continues on page four of the business daily also kenya now orders civil servants back to work that is a story that we have also on the front page of the business daily this morning tucked away on page four so if indeed you're at home and you're not aware about this information there you have it kenya has ordered you back to work if you are in the public sector and uh, at the back page of the business daily lessons from africa on cutting bad loans also you can follow this at the back page of the business daily i want to show you finally what we have as the editorial cartoons captured by our cartoonists in the country and this is what we have in in the star according to victor this is what he's drawn for us today kenyans or kenyan voters spice a political representation and you can see that particular bottle Oh uh, yes, it, it looks like a uh, salt shaker and we can see a lot of, of course, the mixture of the male and female who will be poured into parliament, right? So the gender parity, at least we have an even kill as far as this election is concerned. And this is what has been captured by Victor in the star today. I want to show you also what we have inside the standard. Of course, we know the tension, the new tension that is going on between or with Russia right now where everyone in the world is also looking at what is happening with Russia. But President Trump is busy, busy on his Twitter account, of course, firing his own uh, nukes, as we can see here. And this is what has been captured uh, by uh, Gado today. Of course, let's not forget what is happening elsewhere as well. The world also is keenly watching what North Korea is doing, especially with the nuke tension. Let's see what we have also inside the Daily Nation, according to Munene. And this is what Munene has drawn for us today. Eagerly awaiting. This is Wenjiku there looking, of course, of keeping the eyes peeled on the screen. Election 2017, final presidential results. We eagerly await to see if that will happen today. Of course, we shall relay that to you from here. A decision 2017. So far, those are the ones that I've received. Standard didn't send his today. And you can grab a copy of the Standard, a copy of the Stir, a copy of the Business Daily for these riveting stories. Now, the National Super Alliance is demanding that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission announce Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka as President and Deputy President-elect, NASA says, that results from the IBC service as at the time of going to press puts Raila ahead of President Turu with almost 300,000 votes. NASA claims an IBC insider provided the documents to them, and Ken Bijungu reports that this is not their only demand. He starts off. NASA claims backed by printouts that indicate presidential real-time results are the latest development that now deepens the mystery over the presidential election. NASA claims that an insider from the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission downloaded and provided the two-page document which has a breakdown of the presidential results as transmitted from the polling stations. The information we are giving you is from the IBC's own database. And by the way, if you live in Kenya, whistleblowers are protected. There's a, a protection program for whistleblowers. And you know what has happened to some people who have come out with information. The coalition, however, declined to name the informant citing security concerns. 
In the document, NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga has 8,041,726 votes, while President Kenyatta has 7,755,428 votes. The National Telling Center, however, shows that President Kenyatta is leading with 8,056,885 votes, while Odinga has 6,659,493 votes. Based on the foregoing, we demand that the IBC chairperson announce the presidential election results forthwith and declare the Right Honorable Raila Molo Odinga and His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka as the duly elected president and deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, respectively. NASA has since written to the IABC notifying the chairman Wafula Chapakati of their findings. NASA is now demanding that the results being displayed be stopped. Evidently, the accurate and lawful results in the presidential elections is the transmission received from the polling stations and contained in the IBC servers and not the unverified displays. The IEBC had indicated that they may announce the winner by Friday afternoon. NASA says that that winner should be them, but the opposition is also disputing the ongoing verification of results using the uploaded forms 34As. When they started posting, they were posting results without the image of the 34 Form 34A. So now the Form 34As are becoming an after, either an afterthought or an after event. That is a very serious issue. NASA, however, did not say what course of action they will take if not announced the winners. The law requires the announcement is made by the chair of the commission within seven days after the election. Ken Mijungu, NTV. And while NASA was disputing the results, observers appear to have a different take. The Carter Center Observers Mission has given the IBC a thumbs up on a well-organized and well-executed election. Former Secretary of State John Kerry speaking during the release of the pre preliminary report of the Observers Mission says, although there were a few hitches with the technology employed by the IBC, it did not affect the integrity of the process. The test of this election is really quite straightforward. It is whether the vote of registered Kenyans has been protected or is being or will be and will be counted in a manner that gives confidence through transparency and accountability to the overall election. That's the test. It is our firm conclusion that the IEBC has put in place and is thus far following a detailed process of paper ballot counting and security which, if followed through to the final steps, can give each Kenyan confidence that their vote was properly recorded and that therefore this election can appropriately certify the outcome. Yes, we observed minor variances here and there that evidenced a deviation from the established process, but none that we thus far feel affected the overall integrity of the process. Now, there are things that need to be refined and corrected, lessons that need to be applied, but believe me, this is true of almost any election anywhere. The bottom line is that we believe the IEBC put in place a detailed, transparent process of voting, counting, reporting, and securing the vote, all of which lends significant credibility and accountability and therefore can, when and if followed through to the end, provide confidence in the results. That is what is important to each and every Kenyan's vote. All right, we want to cross over to Eldoret where there is celebration hoopla. Of course, uh, we know we have from there also the first woman senator. This is a senator-elect of uh, Wasungishu uh, County. And of course, that is uh, Margaret Kamara. You can see the reactions there. People are celebrating uh, from early morning, right? 
and uh, we shall cross over to just get also the feel and flavor that uh, will be delivered also uh, by our reporter, Lois Wongoy in Eldoret. Good morning, Lois. Good morning, Debai. From the county of Oasingishu, we are at the county's main talent center here at the Eldoret Polytechnic. It has been a long night for uh, leaders-elect, led by Governor-elect Jackson Mandago, Senator-elect Margaret Kamar, and woman rep-elect Gladys Boss Shalei. So currently, what is going on is, the, is that the county's uh, returning officer, Mr. Jackson Nyonje, is preparing to start issuing those uh, three certificates. These leaders have literally spent the night here. They have braved the cold and also the anxiety among their supporters to ensure that this process uh, kicked off last night. Uh, but owing to logistical challenges, it was not possible. But currently what is going on is that the returning officer, the county's uh, returning officer, Mr. Jack Nyonje, is set and uh, stand by with those three certificates to start giving these particular leaders their supporters who are allowed into this particular uh, area which was kept off from the public save for political party agents and their agents have also braved the night and uh, they were here from about 10 p.m. last night just waiting for this particular process currently they are flanking these leaders who had been joined by traditional leaders uh, who also double as their supporters to await this particular uh, vital moment for them which uh, also culminates the campaign trail and also the election period for uh, them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let yeah, us yeah, now give you those yeah, pictures yeah. for the woman rep being crowned.
those are the live pictures from Eldoret where of course we can see uh, we have Margaret Kumbar uh, who is now the senator-elect and also Gladys Bosschule, the women representative, they're just about to receive their certificate. And of course, we have a reporter, uh, Lois Ngoi, on the ground. She'll be giving us all the details of that. And of course, this con conversation continue pace. We know this is a big break also for the women. This is the first time that, yes, we've seen no affirmative action has come to the fore. And I want to also draw you back to what uh, Steno had drawn yesterday in the People Daily. Behind me have that particular editorial cartoon. Right, and of course, them breaking the final band. This is what we have on the front. This is the editorial page of the People Daily yesterday. Uh, Charity Ngilu, uh, Anwe Goro, and Joyce Loboso, of course, there with their winning streak. We have our panelists here this morning to take us through this. And of course, also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, what will pick the interest of the National Gender and Equality Commission is this particular story of the first female, the first three female governors that we will have also in parliament. Also, that is outgoing National Assembly Deputy Speaker and Bomet Member of Parliament, Joyce Laboso. Also, Cabinet Secretaries Anwe Goro and uh, Jared Ngilu as well. We have also the nominated senator, now an elected senator, Fatuma Dulo, and also N Nakuru County Assembly Speaker. This is Susan Kihika as well. Let's begin with you, Winfred Lichuma. Your reaction to this? Uh, thanks, and good morning. Of course, I'm smiling all the way. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in the history of this country, from the time we got the new constitution and got the 47 uh, governors, we now have three female governors. Mm -hmm. What that tells us is that women can do it. Yes. Uh, we have broken the seal, and um, we, I just want to congratulate the three and the, congratulate both men and women who mm -hmm. voted for these uh, three uh, women to take the top leadership positions in the counties. Yes. And uh, we have three senators also. Uh, for the first time again, we are going to have elected senators sitting in the Senate. Yes. Because previously we had uh, 18 women in the Senate. Uh, but they all were nominated. Congratulations to uh, the three. Uh, my colleague, uh, former Commissioner uh, Fatima Dulo, yes. uh, Susan Kihiga, and uh, 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 Margaret uh, Kamar. We also have not just stopped there.